Hello, this is Gene. I thought I would uh, maybe change my background for you guys to over 100 people that actually listen to what I have to say. Um, I said after my last video I might come back and uh, talk about the debate. Um, I didn't watch the, de the debate. What I did do was I looked at the transcripts and I also looked at uh, some um, snippets, I guess, from the debate. Uh, I could see a lot of people on the right were upset that uh, Trump did not go at her hard in certain areas like in Benghazi um, and the fact that he was asked so much about Iraq and whether he would have supported a war or not when he was never, he wasn't a senator at that time, she was, and he was a citizen of the United States and I don't really think that was that was the actor or the, the person they should have asked about that. They want to talk about the support for the Iraq war, obviously that was uh, Clinton's thing and it was one of the reasons why she didn't get the nomination in 2008 um, because Obama was against the war. So, but, like I said, I was thinking about doing it, but um, actually I want to talk about a dream I had last night. Um, there were two of them. One of them was a, kind of a weird one. I had um, the guy from <clears throat> Guardians of the Galaxy, Christopher Pratt, I guess, was in there with me. And it was like a buddy movie, and uh, we were trying to save the world and all that stuff. And I think I just for some reason I had that in my mind because I had seen the um, last cowboy movie he did with uh, Denzel, The Magnificent Seven. Okay movie, no real heart in it. Um, very similar to, let's say, those who are fans of uh, Jurassic, Jurassic World and they saw the one um, now. Or if you were fans of Star Wars and you saw The Forks Awa Force Awakens, um, more basically just rebooting uh, ideas. Um, so, overall, it was okay. A uh, good summer type movie. Uh, could have been better, but it wasn't. But I guess because in the entire movie he's cracking up and laughing, and he was doing that in my my dream. So I woke up. Let me get something to drink here. Wait, since I'm an old man, and I just worked to the lawn and. Thank you. Anyway, it'll help me, obviously. Uh, after I work out, sometimes it's very hard for me to talk. So, so it was like 3 o'clock in the morning, I woke up, and I had a little, you know, normally I don't have good uh, dreams. Um, maybe I'll talk about that, what happened to me, and why I still have those type of dreams now, and why I get money <laughs> from the VA, because I have those issues. Um, <clears throat> but, so I wake up, and I went, I went back to sleep, and of course... I can't have two decent dreams. I have um, one that was a lot worse. And in that movie, or in that dream, uh, I was in a crowd watching um, a presentation about toxic, toxic uh, masculinity. And uh, and I'll, I, what I'll do is I'll, uh, below I'll um, send you a link uh, on Paul Elam's um, video I did about that. So when I saw that this morning, it was weird because that happened. And then uh, this morning when I got up, I saw that and I read that. And I watched his and I'm like, holy crap. You know, it was kind of a weird coincidence, coincidence type of thing. Um, but anyway, so here I am in, the, I'm in the, the audience. A lot of people in the audience and, you know, kind of like going to see like Milo or something like that. Uh, maybe three or four hundred people in, in the audience and they're all sitting there just listening to these people and um, every woman comes up and says us that she was a victim, victim of something and this and that and this and that and at the end uh, Joe Biden gets up there and starts saying that men need to step up and protect women and all this stuff that I talk about on my channel quite a bit um, and Paul talks about that in his video on, on that subject and that's something you really should watch uh, he, obviously he, he dealt with men so much as a counselor and stuff so he understands what happens uh, with men and how we think um, so I would um, think that that would be a good thing to watch. But anyway, <clears throat> since it's my movie, or my uh, dream, and I don't really knew at the time that I was in the dream. Sometimes you know that you can do that. You can kind of like change it around and be cool in it. But I just listened to it, and I could see myself getting angry and listening to this. So I got up, and there was like the question and, and answer type of thing, and I got up there, and I started saying some things, and I, I tried to explain... Um, 
you know, present myself as somebody that should be listened to. I said, you know, I'm a veteran. I have a special needs kid. And I have two daughters. One of them is uh, gay. The other one might be. I'm not sure. You know, I'm having this this thing and just watching the women on TV kind of like rolling their, ha- their eyes. And I and I, I started saying to uh, Ch- Joe Biden, I said, for everything we heard up there, that uh, everybody on that stage was a vic- was a female that got uh, victimized. And I, I said, so I, if I come out there and say that probably 20 or 30 percent of all uh, rape ap- accusations are false, people are going to call me a rape apologist. I just want to say this: that every time, every every uh, incidents up there you see up there of how we as men are the problem, I can point to the same level of, I guess, female nature that falsely accuses men, and men go to jail, some get killed. And I, and I brought up the fact that in the South, uh, it was a common thing that if a female, a, fem- a white female, was having an affair with a slave, or even a, br- a free black man, and they got found out, she would say that he raped her. And they would lynch him, and the woman walked along with her life like nothing happened. And I said, this happens as well uh, in divorce, uh, and I, hate, I, I brought it up in the movie, or in, the, uh, in my dream, I said, I don't know why it was in my name, but I said, uh, I'll talk about something that's, you know, uh, in the news right now. Uh, uh, Jolene, uh, J- Angie Jolie is divorcing Pratt Pitt. I don't care about these people, but now she says that he was abusive to the kids and her. But all along, she, he never was that way, apparently, only now. And I said, this, I said the whole in- industry is uh, set up for females. The uh, fi- family courts is set up for females. They're in the mental health area is set up basically to blame men for everything that is going on in a woman's life. So I'm listening to this on the stage, and I said, you re-, and, I, and of course, you could see the women started saying stuff, and women stopped me from talking. And I said, no, I'm going to say what I have to say. I listened to you for now an hour, and you're going to listen to what I have to say. I said, everybody uh, believes this. Uh, or you uh, look at us and say that we are in a, we're in a rape culture. When we all, when I know that all men, 99.9% of them, abhor rape, sometimes they'll go in and kill a, a man just being accused for it without due process. We find out that, that even in all rape cases, that about 20 or 30% of them, after go to the trial, they are found uh, not guilty. And a lot of them are based on, they find DNA that it's not the man that did this. And no matter what the woman says, yeah, he did it, he did it, he did it. We still go to jail, or we go to trial. And you people up there sit there and say that, well, no, man, it's like only 2% of people actually go to jail for it. And I said, well, that's fine. And I can say 2% of women that brings up rape are trying to do something at men. So either we both have a problem. It's not a man's issue. It's a, a human nature issue. Women have been doing this from the dawn of time to get resources. They falsely accuse men for something so they can get their resources. They do it all the time in divorce. And so I was talking all this stuff, and you could still see people were getting upset about it. And I said, uh, until we allow men to talk to other men, to understand what they have to say, till the federal government either gets out of trying to help men or allows more money to go to helping men. Uh, we're, we're not going to all of a sudden decide that uh, by telling somebody at a university to sit for 30 minutes out about not to, to uh, rape women. It, rape, rapists are going to do that regardless of that. People who have that per- pathology is going to do it regardless of what somebody else says in their life. And these are the very, 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 very small amount of men that rape. And they're um, serial rapists. And I brought up Brock, Brock Turner. And, of course, everybody got very upset about that. And I said, this, this person, based on what I know, he had no signs before of, it, of himself. Um, but everybody wanted to lynch him after that, even though he went to jail for three months which was really uh, basically a, a miscommunication of two young people who were drunk. And everybody wants to kill them. And 
they want to they want to prove that that's rape culture. So again, I was having these. Uh, and I said at the same time, I said, at what point are we ever going to allow uh, women to be responsible for what they do? I said, is there ever a time? And I've talked about this in other videos. Is there ever a time the women doesn't do they ever have agency when it comes to things like this? That if it don't matter if they're drink if they're drunk uh, or if they feel I mean, it happened to me, and I don't want to go into it so much, but somebody came to my house and got on top of me when I was out, and, and you know, when I was that age, when you wake up in the morning, you had, you know, a wooden thing going on there, and she was on top of me. So, to, <laughs> I mean, of course, when I tried to report it, people laughed at me. So, there is no rape culture when it comes to females. It's only to men. Um, we get laughed at that we don't have sex when somebody's given it to us. And, uh, but the, the idea that we allow the feminists to define what, what our mas masculinity is, and then when they define it as toxic, and it says that it had to be changed, that we had to be changed, and they're doing it. Uh, look, at, look in your own public use, um, schools and see what they're telling the boys. It's all this, um, I am the good man, that's what Biden is. He's the... Uh, but every time you see him on, on, on TV, he's like touching women. And he looks like the cr creepy uncle. You know, I, I have that vibe that I get from him. Um, but it's, the, the, it's pervasive. Uh, and the, they continually shame uh, young boys and to tell men to be a man. And to be a man means that if anything happens to a female, we have to go in and defend her. It doesn't have to be somebody even know. It, that's we have to do that because men are all bad, but we all know when you really look at the stats, when you really look at rape, and not what the feminists have made it, that what our lawyer, uh, our Congress has made it, real rape. And I hate you know five or six years ago when that guy said that and everybody got on his ass about it. There is a difference between date rape, date rape, or miscommunication or dra drunk sex than than rape. Somebody who's a rapist has a pathology that finds the easiest person to have sex with or rape and continually does the same thing over and over again because that person needs to do it. It's part of their pathology. Somebody who's 19 going out with a 22-year-old, and that's how it was at the Brock Tuner thing, she was the one who was a full adult. She was the one that could drink. He couldn't, shouldn't have been able to drink, but he did. But she drank so much that she got drunk, and then she woke up saying that, he did this to her. That's just miscommunication. I don't care what anybody else says. That happens all the freaking time. So when the feminists get up there and they say, you know, 9 to 10, 90% of the people that rape you, you know. That is something they, they've come up and said, anytime a man has sex with a woman, at some point she can say, no, it's rape. There is, yes, there is some studies that say that you know the people that molest you or the people that rape you. But the real stranger rape, uh, the one that is, uh, you know, violence in nature, not sexual in nature, that is it's a very, very sm uh, small, small amount of men and women that do it, because women do it well as well. So, but the other areas, and they, we've allowed them to do it because other men are told, hey, you need to stop doing it. So the good men like Biden or Peyton or there's other people who get up there and say shit all the time, say you have to get involved regardless of your own, you know, your life because people get killed when they try to do this shit. And there's, there's a, there has to be a time that we, as a, as, as a society in the West, that we held women to be at the same level that men are when it comes to responsibility. Don't go out at 3 o'clock in the morning shit-faced and think that something might not happen. Guys do it all the freaking time. Yeah, we're the risk-takers, but we also know not to go to certain parts of Baltimore at night at 3 o'clock or Coco, for that matter, at 3 o'clock in the morning. And when a woman says that it's not my fault, or actually the victim activists say that, it's not your fault, it's never your fault, well, I never would say that anybody deserves to be raped, but let's be let's be serious here. Uh, it, I don't know. It's 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 so infuriating, and that the femi feminism has made women so. They're all victims, and this thing is just. 
um, actually gone to other areas. It's gone into race relations and everything. Everybody's a victim now. And now even Clockboy is back and he's suing 7,000 people because why? Because he brought in a fucking thing that looked like a damn bomb and now he wants to sue everybody? Their own freaking president sits there and sits there and just is a defender for Islam and what they believe. I mean, I could go on and on about what's going on, and it's all related. It's all it's all related. But there is no champion when when um, when Trump says he's going to be the champion for people. He's not a champion for men men issues at all. Uh, maybe somebody can get up to him and talk him about it. But he is the, another one. He is a good man, and. Uh, he wants, to, he wants to do all this stuff. At the end of the day, he wants to make women be happy. Um, and until we go past this, and we, we, never, we may never do it, there is, there is a small uh, per percentage of men that are actually going away from it. And, of course, the first thing that women do about this is that they put books out there, they get on there and their text talks, and they sit there and say they want to shame men that don't want to get married, uh, that they're not real men that they're slackers. And this hasn't been going on since the 80s. And back then I didn't really understand what the slacker uh, term was. But now I know. And I know what that was. That's just another female shaming men to do what they want to do. And Paul talks about it in his video. And you really need to see it if you're into these issues at all. He talks about as, as empowerment as empowerment that fema uh, feminists really want to do. They don't really want that. They want chivalry to come back. They want men to just be tools and, and do whatever they want to do at their, at their uh, request. They want us to put down um, our own clothes down so they can walk across the puddle as they show. Like the Airwatch Red uh, Pill Phenocity, he shows that thing. And it's, it doesn't, you know, and, but the problem is, and I'm going back to my dream, you know, of course it was my dream. At some point I knew I was in my dream. Everybody stood up and clap for me. Obviously in my dream I did it a lot better than I'm doing right now. I put everything out there. I said this is going on. Suicide rates and all that. Because the feminists still want us to think that our suicide rates because because, because we're masculine. That we that uh, patriarchy is making us do things like this. They don't they don't even look that almost all the, sh the shame that you get as a kid growing up is not your father saying hey stand up and be a good man or be a good boy. It's the it's it's the parent it's the mother. The mother sh continually shames. It happened to me. Shames the the the, the uh, boy to be responsible for the sister. Now you may not think that's shaming, but it is. It's saying, obviously their their um, life is more important than you. And I want to just just say something about this. And I'm not saying it's true or not, but uh, it's been the twentieth uh, year anniversary since uh, John Bonet died, was killed, and I watched one of the uh, things on it, and it looked almost exactly what I just talked about. Now, it may not be true, but first boy, the first person that was, the first boy, babies that they had, the parents, uh, Patsy and John, I think they were, they had a boy, and he was, obviously, they had, they had a lot of money, and they spoiled him, and then she came along, and they pretty much forgot about him. And there were several uh, situations where he did some of the craziest things, but he, which which I did, which is weird. Um, I was upset about something, and it was right after my uh, younger sister grew, uh, was born. And I was so for some reason going on in my mind. I th I thought it was the right thing to do to take my feces and just put it all over the wall. Whether I, I was thinking of trying to get some sort of, obviously, attention, because I wasn't getting any. Um, and he did the same thing. He started, he started doing that, putting the feces in John Bonet's room. And there's, like, um, evidence all around the room that she, he did this regularly. And there was some time that she act he actually hit her with a, uh, a golf club. So it, it wouldn't be shocking to me that uh, this, this boy who was shamed to in different ways but when you're just when you were the, the apple of the eye and then they forget about you and everything's on her that's shame that's still shameful shame shaming your son and he probably slapped and killed her and the, the parents probably you know, covered it up um, I mean obviously 
does it relate to what I'm saying? I think it kind of does. Now, he might have had a, a psycho, uh, psychiatric, you know, issues going on in his brain, and that's what he, you know, can't really make him responsible for what he did. But this is where the first uh, approval that, that kids look for are the parents. Um, and when the mom, or, the mom is almost, almost always the one there, because somebody like John Ramsey, very... Uh, sex successful, not home as much. So when that person takes away, that is, sh well, you can call it shunning, isn't it? But it's the same thing as shaming somebody. And then you're no longer the apple of the eye. Most kids can get past that. They find other things, and obviously they kind of move away, not move away, but they start moving away from the parents, and they find friends and stuff like that. He probably wasn't in that area to do that. Um, so I don't really want to talk so much about it. But anyway... That's what I want to talk about today. Uh, as far as the debate is, uh, I think overall, on points, I think she won. But she didn't give us anything that is any different than what she's told us for the last 30 years. Uh, I can say, what, the day after that, uh, Trump was here. Um, we had 12 or 15,000 people in the hangar here in Melbourne. And another 10 or 1,000 outside. He's going to win Brevard County. There's no question about that. Um, there's a good chance he's going to Florida. And if he does that and gets either Ohio or Pennsylvania, it's very possible that Trump is going to be champion or going to be the president. Again, do I think he's the right person? I think that he has, I, I think deep down inside, I think he does care about the American people. I think he needs to understand there are other, there's more important than um, just women all the time. And we got to get past that uh, and, and think that uh, um, we're, we can't all be the good men. We have to be realistic and say, Sometimes you shouldn't do sh you, you should be accountable accountable for what you do, and uh, that's basically it. You have any questions? You want to talk about this in the comments? Go ahead. Um, I know it was a long, this was a long one, but I just want to get it out. But that's it. You guys have a good day, and I'll talk with you later. Bye.